Good evening and welcome to the Creekside Neighborhood Meeting. My name is Gary Vogren of Kaiser Vogren Design. We are land planners, landscape architects local to Franklin and are the applicant for this project representing our client, Capital Investment Group, of which are the owners developers of this project. Um, thank you for your time this evening. I'd like to set out a few ground rules, if you don't mind, for this call to keep it streamlined and avoid talking over each other. Um, we respectfully request that all videos be turned off um, through the presentation and be on mute. Uh, request that all questions be sent through the chat form and maybe with a small group we can answer questions at the end. The chat button is located on the top right hand corner of the go to menu meeting. You see a little bubble cloud. You can type in some comments in there and we'll kind of track some of those. I see Amanda Rose chimed in here. Um, this meeting is being recorded and will be posted on the city's website for future uh, viewing and people who could not attend. So that's that's good. Please allow us to run through this presentation and then get any chat questions or comments at the end of this meeting. Um, it's slated for an hour if we need to go that long, but that's it. Um, so thank you. Uh, first off, I trust all as well, and we welcome those that are part of this neighborhood meeting regarding the pro proposed Creekside development. On the call, we have members of the design team and developers of the project, City of Franklin planning, and potentially city officials also could be present on this call as well. So we welcome you if you are here. I would like to introduce Christian Dial real briefly from Capital Investment Group based out of Cincinnati, Ohio. Um, his firm and Christian and I have become well-versed on the understanding of both Envision Franklin, his own ordinance, and both he and I have been working with the city of planning, engineering, and meetings with aldermen uh, and city officials since October of last year. So, Christian, if you have anything you'd like to say real briefly, go ahead. You there, Christian? I hear a kid in the background. Well, we'll get to him later if he can chime in when he gets a chance. I appreciate it. Um, so really, let's talk about this first introductory slide. Um, we'd just like to talk about the agenda. Um, first off is we'll talk about the, the project attributes, the character images, the master plan, some site photos, some graphic illustratives, some elevations, proposed concept renderings, pressed images, and then we'll go into Q&A. Um, so first thing, the process of this project. This neighborhood meeting is required because we have a submittal for a PUD development plan and rezoning from the existing estate residential to allow for single family lots and big houses or multiplexes. I will get into the specifics of this plan and later in this presentation. But first off, this PUD amendment request is in compliance with a conservation subdivision per the Envision Franklin document of which governs all land uses within the city of Franklin. With the primary use being single family homes and big houses or multiplexes, those are allowed within a conservation design. We submitted this PED back in April of 26, April 26 of 2021 for a tenant of Franklin Municipal Planning Commission on July 22nd of this year, noted at the bottom of the slide. The Franklin Municipal Planning Commission will at that time vote on this PED amendment and we hope make a decision of recommendation of approval to move on to the mayor and board of aldermen for three more readings, one with being a public hearing, and that should go tentatively through August through October of this year to hopefully obtain final approval before we can do any kind of construction. This is just a PUD plan development plan. We have currently met with city aldermen, historic zoning commission, Franklin First Methodist Church, and Franklin Planning Engineering, to garner feedback during this process. So it's been very collaborative. We also plan to have an additional neighborhood meeting independently with the church adjacent to the property on June 15th as well. So let's get into the project. Oops. First slide, just general contact site plan. I think most of you know where this project is at. It's on the southern boundary of Mac Hatcher Memorial Parkway and Franklin Road. Consists of two parcels totaling plus or minus 61.8 acres. On the western side, um, it is about 13.44 acres adjacent to the church. 
On the eastern side, it's about 48.36 acres in total on that site. Um, we are located in within the Franklin Historic Preservation Overlay and the design concept of conservation design of Envision Franklin. Um, other contextual elements, you have the Franklin First Methodist Church, United Methodist Church to the west, Spencer Creek, just south and bisects the property. Retreated Iron Horse at the corner here, Harlandsdale Manor, a park at Harlandsdale Farm. So that's kind of the site context we're talking about. Um, just to zoom in a little bit about features about this site, uh, being that we are in the Envision Franklin Conservation Subdivision, we are required to have a 150 foot building setback along both properties along Franklin Road and Mac Hatcher, which is denoted in that tan. So no buildings can be placed within that zone of 150 feet off the right of way along both Mac Hatcher and Franklin Road. The green area is the Creekside Estate, ancillary historic buildings, preservation, as well as Spencer Creek 100 year floodplain, the floodway, riparian buffers, natural features, and meeting the 50% open space per Envision Franklin. The orange area is really what's developable outside of the setbacks, the floodplain, all the natural features, buffers. So that acreage on the left side or west is about six acres developable outside the floodplain and buffers and setbacks and about 14 acres developable on the right side or eastern tract of about, yeah, 14 acres. So that just gives a little context to the site plan in terms of its environment. Well, I'll talk a little bit about just the character of the project and the imagery we'd like to propose. The Creekside community is designed to invoke a feeling of living on an old farmstead and all, allow community members to connect with nature and wellness. The community will include trails, hiking, biking opportunities along with recreation center, clubhouse with a pool. The homes will surround central green spaces that can be programmed into community guard, gathering spaces, garden beds, community gardens, active lawn areas, place to sit and read a good book. Overall, the entirety of the site will exceed the minimum 50% of open space required by Envision Franklin and Conservation Subdivision. So these are just a snap, snapshot of diff, different amenities and character images that we'd like to provide as part of this community. And some of these are existing on site. You know, we've got a creek of Spencer Creek. We've got uh, a nature preserve gateway we'd like to create along Franklin Road with a, a horse line uh, fence row with trees and all other organizing elements of open space, clubhouse, community barns, community gardens. So just the theme of that rural aspect for the design of the community. So the overall master plan. I'll just talk a little bit about our mission about this project. Our mission is to develop a one-of-a-kind residential community on the east and west sides of Franklin Road, south of Madcatcher Parkway, that pays homage to the natural beauty and heritage of the land in the city of Franklin. It is important to us to create a sustainable community while following the guideline guiding principles of the Envision Franklin document and the historic zoning overlays for the subject parcels. The vision of the future community of Creekside is an effort to protect the beautiful land that sits along Franklin Road. Creekside Estate will be preserved along with the historic structure surrounding the existing home, denoted as Building A on this plan. Um, the, it will be repurposed into a community office and amenity. The historic home will serve as the front entrance to the eastern side of the property and development. We will maintain and enhance the heavily wooded buffers areas around the Creekside Estate and the remainder of the development. So preserve the tree lines here, the character of the building, give it a little TLC in terms of its uh, architectural character and bring it up to its uh, a, a better quality of character. The community will include a mix of single family residences that face Franklin Road on both sides with expansive green setbacks between the homes and Franklin Road. The single family lots are denoted in yellow on this plan on both sides of the property. The single family homes will be alley loaded with no roadways between Franklin Road and the homes. These homes will be just fronting directly on Franklin Road, fronting a public street with no road in front, all addressing Franklin Road. Homes will be meticulously designed to meet the historical architectural character found in the city of Franklin. 
pushed further beyond the single family homes on both sides will be the big house estates or multiplexes, which is denoted in orange behind the yellow single family lots along Franklin Road and Mac Hatch. Um, there, these big houses are four units each with two to two and a half stories tall. These buildings are intended to vary design and exterior look, but will resemble large estate homes found in Franklin, in particular, Hollandale Manor. Both the single family homes and big house estates will be required to re be reviewed individually by Historic Zoning Commission, as well as conform with the Franklin Zoning Ordinance. So many layers of review will be for each home as it's presented to the city. We believe that creating a truly connected and front-facing development along Franklin Road and Matt Catcher will create an engaging environment and bring a sense of community within the development. The use of building as edges along with wonderful streetscape design create a sense of scale proportion that will be compatible with the city of Franklin. There will not be any buildings within this development that turns their back to the roads or edges. You'll note that even the units fronting the church are, are all the, the big houses are fronting the church as well as internal drives to the project. There will not, um, trees, very landscaping, lighting, and branding will enhance the development uses while also creating a cohesive branded environment. The streetscape brand along Franklin Road and Metcatcher will maintain a consistency as the density and uses change to allow a sense of connectivity while driving, walking, or biking within the development. Branding and wayfinding will provide an identity and a story to make Creekside a truly cohesive development that will add value to the city of Franklin and its unique sense of place. Um, so the key elements to the master plan I want to talk about also. So the scenic corridor of the 150 foot minimum building setbacks, that is driven by the Envision Franklin document. So these homes are all 150 feet off the property line of both Franklin Road and Matt Catcher but all fronting towards Franklin Road. And I'll show some images to that shortly. We really want to provide a real character edge along Franklin Road with horse rail fencing, trees, landscaping, trails, connecting to Mac Hatcher, multi-purpose trail to the north, and also trails adjacent to the church along Daniel McMahon that eventually lead down to Harlesdale Manor to the park at Harlesdale Farm. So great connectivity for pedestrian activity. Protect and enhance the existing tree lines along Franklin Road and Matt Catcher. I've darkened the trees that are along Franklin Road and Matt Catcher. Those are very strong hedgerows that we want to maintain, but also supplement as needed, but we want to preserve those edges. So it creates a small window, as most people know, when you drive in, you look left and right, you're looking into an open field. So we want to keep the character of those trees there. Um, Open space, 50% is the minimum. We're probably pushing 60 to 65% in total open space, both with natural features to the south, the floodplain, but also internal amenities of the different deep pocket parks or community gardens, amenity spaces, the Creekside Estate, the 150 foot setbacks, all those green elements contribute to that open space character. Um, historic preservation of the existing Creekside Estate as a community center. Um, event area and leasing office for the, the development is kind of at the forefront and remains that character. Uh, talk a little bit about the unit kind of data. Um, so the single family lots along Franklin Road, we're proposing 34 total single family lots denoted in yellow on both sides of the property. They range in width from 40 to 70 foot, 70 foot lots, with the largest lots located within the central main, main view shed into the sites on both sides, while the smaller lots are relegated behind the existing vegetation. So we really want to open up the central corridor for the larger lots ranging in 70 foot and the lesser as you kind of move towards the edges. Also with these fronting lots, we're showing a varying setback, working with planning and Historic zoning that we're showing a, a setback that ranges from five to 10 foot, depending on the lot size. And I'll show some lot diagrams on that, but just gives it a very streetscape edge and character along Franklin Road to open up that corridor. And then behind, behind the single family lots, as I mentioned, there's 33 big house estates denoted in orange. 
These are four units total each, two units on the ground floor, two units above. On the second level, they have attached garages behind them, as well as on-street parking internally. Um, the amenities, we've denoted kind of these blocks of D, uh, the different amenities on the site. There's a central green amenity amongst the big houses here that could be community gardens, event lawns, um, a pool, outdoor gathering spaces, but all these are organized in a, in a scenario that best suits themselves adjacent to all residential units for the community. Um, we've also have a lot of, as I mentioned, the rural theme as well as keeping a lot of this natural preserve area as well for trails and connectivity. Also, as part of this project, there's parkland dedica dedication fees in the amount of around seven, $715,000 that will be contributed to the city of Franklin for trails within this quadrant and parks. So that's part of this project as well. On the transportation end of it, Daniel McMahon is located right here along Franklin Road. We are working with the city engineering and staff to relocate that and move it to the north. Primarily to get it out of the floodplain, this little connection of Daniel McMahon is in the floodplain. Um, so we'd like to move this up and abandon that and create a common connection across from each other to each site for life safety, get it out of the floodplain, provide safety and access to both portions of the site. Move on to some lot diagrams here. So this speaks a little bit to the single family lots fronting Franklin Road and Mac Hatcher. Um, they vary in depth from 250 feet to 270 feet in length and they all front Franklin Road. Um, as I mentioned, the lot ranges from 40 to 70 feet. Um, minimum building area is 4,000 square foot per the Vision Franklin document. We have 150 foot setbacks, as I mentioned. Side, side, side yard setbacks vary also, just to provide variety along the streetscape. So the smaller lots have a five foot setback. Larger lots arranged are from seven and a half to 10 feet to create that variety. Corner lots are 10 feet. Um, so just wanted to be able to create a sense of streetscape along the front of Franklin Road. Then there's a trail out front, as I mentioned on the original plan that runs through here. A, a trail within that 150 foot setback and also a tree grove to create that scenic corridor along Franklin Road. And the other element of this is also that by moving this road, Daniel McMahon to the north, we've now created a large expansive open space down Franklin Road as you come into town. Just keep that all natural setting, preserve Spencer Creek as you move down into Harlesdale Manor. This is the big house or multiplex. Um, these are the buildings behind all the single family lots. Um, we're proposing a minimum 15 foot building setback between these. Some of these setbacks will be greater than that, but the 15 is the minimum side to side with parking in the back with uh, surface parking and garage loaded entry for these units. Uh, a little snapshot of just architectural elevations for both the single family and the big house estates. These architectural styles shall be representative of historic Creekside Manor as well as architectural elements unique to the styles will front Franklin Road and that catch the streets. Final architectural elements such as materials, colors, masonry types will be coordinated with the city of Franklin after our PUD and during the PUD as part of detailed arch architectural building and site plan submittals. And as mentioned, will be reviewed independently before the Franklin Historic Zoning Commission as well. So these are just single family elevations, character images. That's one set here. Another set, some larger houses here on the, the larger lots fronting Franklin Road. Uh, just bringing in styles and character reminiscent of this area and character. Moving on to the big house estates or multiplexes. The two above diagrams show the one elevation type and there'll be multiple within the community. Um, we also show a Harlandale Manor estate 
um, just down the road south that everybody knows about just in care comparison. We're trying to match the character style um, of these elevations as well to maintain that character and harmony. This is another elevation of the, the big house estate, alternative rendering. Again, comparing it to one of the big houses at Harlesdale Manor, trying to emulate that form and character, massing. Again, trying to speak to the character of this area in terms of its scenic beauty. I want to discuss just real briefly, we drew a cross section, two cross sections along Franklin Road to denote the building setback corridors off of Franklin Road. We all know that this is the gateway into Franklin. So the first section, cross section A, is bisecting the middle of the site, which is representative of, of up top of this image here. So we're showing Franklin Road in the middle. Here's the one, here's the right of way property line, the 150 foot setback on both sides, proposing a trail system, a horse rail fencing element, tree grove, and then you have the single family house on both sides to create that real character as you're coming in at Franklin. As you move south towards Harlesdale Manor, we have this expansive open space, which is great, we're preserving, but then it tightens up along this section B, Franklin Road at Harlesdale Manor, where the houses are closer to the street, 65 feet on one side, up to 85 feet on the other side. It has strong vegetation, but it does narrow down as you go down south, and we just wanna show that comparison that a greater setback along our development that it kind of tightens up as you get down to Franklin. These are massing images that kind of display what we are proposing along Franklin Road. So these are eye level shots if you're driving in a car looking on this plan, if you're looking to the left driving south on the eastern side. So you're just crossing this little arrow shows you where you are in your car if you're looking left or right going to Mac Hatcher, that's what you're gonna see. The existing tree line to the left is this mass of trees here, the proposed trees, and then you can see the, the ghosted houses behind that. That is that corridor there. Driving a little bit further south, looking on the same site, this is kind of mid block where we have a, an emergency access and trail system that opens up a little- The link's space. on page two of that PDF. Um, so this creates a character of varying lot sizes, varying home sizes, setback variety, and shows the, the horse rail fence, the trails that fronts Franklin Road before you get to the, the facades of the homes. Next shot, driving a little bit further south, looking left. Again, the tree line hedgerow, the horse rail fencing, 150 foot setback. And then you start to see the, the large mass of trees as you come on Creekside Estate. So we did the same thing on the other side. See the little white or the yellow arrow, the car here, you're looking right into the field. This is the single family lots that are 150 foot setbacks, the horse rail fence, the trail, the tree grove, creating that scenic corridor coming into Franklin. The mid block shot right in the middle of the site, looking to the right. Again, just showing that the house is set far back from the street, 150 feet, varying lot sizes, open space between the home sites, varying setbacks, the largest lots being in the central corridor. And then the same, one more shot further, yellow arrow, looking to the right, the same kind of amenities and streetscapes that we're proposing along Franklin Road, but really creating that strong rural sense of character along Franklin Road to create that scenic view corridor. I'd like to show one last thing. I'd like to compare another project that my firm, KVD Design, called Car The Gates at Carlisle uh, uh, in Franklin. Um, this was developed before Envision Franklin. Um, this is located out on Highway 96 West in Carlisle Lane. And what I wanted to show here that even preceding Envision Franklin, um, this project was developed at a density which is even higher than Creekside. Sweet, sweet. Um, this is denoting along Highway 96. I want to compare this to, if you think of this as Franklin Road, 
as opposed to Highway 96, you'll see that these houses are pushed back, ranging from about 125 feet here to about 150 feet here along Highway 96. And if you turn the corner and go down Carlisle Lane, this open space is from 85 to 100 feet. It's actually 100 feet set back from the Carlisle Lane. What's unique about this is also that they're all front facing and side loading these streets. These lot ranges also range from 40 to 80, 80 feet wide. They also have a street in front of them, which we do not. But it, it just shows that what can be done within a 150 foot setback on a project along another gateway in the city of Franklin. This shows the central green in the middle of the gates of Carlisle. And what's unique to this is also not that just only it's a great open space within the community, it's kind of the anchor or the heart of this development and community. It also shows that this green from this street to that home right there is 150 feet. If you go out there and see that, you can see the character of that open space and how that really sets itself up very well for an open view shed and central amenity. So this I want to show also, this is the view from Highway 96 looking into Carlisle. These homes are 150 feet back from the right, right ranging 125 feet to 150 feet back from Highway 96. So very in character of what we're trying to do on Creekside. You can see the strong streetscape, the landscape, the houses are behind that relegated, behind all the landscaping. It just shows what can be done. And these are actually closer than Creek, Creekside because Creekside is 150 to the right of way. You probably got another 50 or 60 feet to the street. So Creekside is a little further back, but it just shows what you can accomplish on a well-designed streetscape with a 150 foot setback. Another comparison on Carlisle Lane, same project. These homes are 100 feet back from the right of way. These are lots ranging from 40 to 50 feet wide, but you can show or you can see the great streetscape, ornamentation, walls, columns, fencing, street trees that can create a great buffer or scenic corridor for a rural character. This, as I mentioned, is the, considered the gateway of the city of the West and also has a greater density, as I mentioned. This really accomplishes the corridor we wish to create at Creekside. So with that, so we appreciate your time and this concludes this presentation. So we'll open it up to any chats or any questions one may have. Go ahead and go in the chat bar and enter some comments or questions. We'd be happy to answer those. Thank you for your time. May Don't I ask a question, please? Yes, go ahead. Hi, um, I'm Marty Prine. My husband and I, Bill Handel, live in Harlan uh, Seal Manor. And you really laid out the plan for the, the subdivision. Uh, but what you did not speak to is uh, any traffic study mm -hmm. for Franklin Road. I noticed that you have one road in same road out mm -hmm. for each side. Um, sometimes we wait as long as five minutes to turn out of our subdivision. I cannot imagine being so close to Mac Hatcher, what kind of traffic tie-ups we're gonna have. And you will have no turn lane there, I'm assuming. And have you done a traffic study? Thank you for your question. I appreciate it, I'll answer that. Um, yes, we are working on a traffic impact study. That's part of the project. We're working with Franklin Engineering Planning um, as part of that process. So that is indeed part of the project that we have to show those improvements to Franklin Road. So that's part of the process. Um, we are looking at, at, looking at uh, left-hand turn lanes, both in the direction of north and south to get into these developments. Thank you for your question. Mm -hmm. Um, this is Bill Handel. Hey, uh, earlier in the presentation, if I listen correctly, you talked about a connection, I think, via trails, which yes, sir. Yeah, I think you kind of overused that word, but you talked about trails connecting mm -hmm. from this development 
to Harlandsdale Manor and then to the park. Um, right. Harlandsdale Manor is all private property. I don't know how you're going to get from your subdivision here through Harlandsdale Manor into the park without walking down Franklin Road, of which there are no sidewalks. Yeah, you know, what I'm saying, thank you, Bill. Yeah, you know, what I'm saying that there is a trail along Daniel McMahon that connects to this little white line. That's what I'm talking about right there. We are connecting to that trail that exists today. So that does go through Harlandale Manor out to Harlandale Farms. Well, but it doesn't con it doesn't connect to the farm. I understand. Yes, you're right. I, I meant to say it's connecting to this trail system, but the intent is to get down to Harlandale, uh, the park at Harlandale Man Harlandale Farm. What um, what's different from the last attempt to sell this project? It, it you you all may be a different uh, development firm, but what's changed? It seems pretty similar to me. Um, this was we brought this property back in 2017. We we're the same design firm that came. It had much higher density, a range of uses, much more uh, diversity in product type. We were asking for a change in Envision Franklin, which went nowhere. <laughs> so it, it died on the vine, so to speak. We did not meet Envision Franklin at this time. This plan, as we are proposing, working with the city Franklin staff, historic zoning is different in that regard. Less density, only two product types, the primary use being single family homes, secondary being the big house estates, multiplexes, which is encouraged by Envision Franklin. But thank you for that comment. Can you um, give a guesstimate of how many bodies will be living in there? And that way we can tell how many car trips per day? Yeah, that's being summarized in the uh, traffic study as part of the submittal. This is generating 166 total units on this project. I'm not sure if I can equate it to people, but it's 166 units. Okay. which is about a 2.68 density. What do you um, anticipate the size of the single family homes being square footage wise? Yeah, um, great question. Um, they range from probably 1,500 square feet minimum to potentially 3,500 square feet, depending on the lot size. And the single families uh, that are yellow, where where is their parking? Is it in an alley behind? Yes, ma'am. This is alley loaded with rear loaded garages. Okay. On both sides of Franklin Road. So there's ancillary surface parking on the church side of the property with garages as well. And then the big houses have rear loaded garages on the alleys or mews as well with on street parking. Okay. Thank you. And what, what is the construction material of the buildings? Okay. I'll give you a break. Repeat that question, please. Construction material, is it hardy siding, is it wood, is it brick? It's all the elements are going to exceed or be minimally uh, guided by the designing principles of the city of Franklin. So it's going to meet the zoning code. It'll have all the elements that the city wants and what they don't want. So we'll have to meet those codes as, as they're held. To. And also, we have to go before a storage zoning commission as well. So it's it's a double look. <laughs> Every material okay. will be scrutinized as we go through the process for individual homes and the estates. Okay. I see we have a couple of chats here. Let's see what we got here. Okay, 34 single family, 33 big houses. Don't sound like your big houses are subordinate. Yeah. By rule. What is it, hey, Gary? What is the current zoning? Is it a state residential? The current zoning, yes, sir, is a state residential. Um, so, this first question here 34 single family lots, 33 big houses. By definition, and working with the city of Franklin planning, the primary use is single family. And that is the, the 34 and the big houses are 33. So they equate kind of one to one. That is how it is ruled at the city. Um, current zoning is a state residential, two units per acre. That's correct. That's correct. That's the current density. How many actual units? It's 166 total units. Good questions.
Let's go to the top here. It appears that Daniel McMahon would have to be condemned and changed to, from private to public to move the entrance. This seems to be poorly addressed. I can address that. So right now, Daniel McMahon is a public road from Franklin Road to about the bend in the road right here. This is public. And then it goes to private as it moves north on the church property. At one time, Daniel McMahon was a public street. Somehow during the process of these two parcels, that public road became private. We are seeking to abandon this public right away, this little stretch here in this bend and move the entrance to the north, as I mentioned, and reassign Daniel McMahon to a public street working with the church as well. So as I mentioned, we have, we've met with them once and we're gonna meet with them again to talk about this as well. So that's the intent of that, to uh, abandon this entrance, convert it to a public street to the north. And then you get out of the floodplain, it's life safety issue by pushing the, the roads to the north. So that's that question. Houses seem awfully close together. How does that preserve the rural character? So as I mentioned, I showed the 150 foot setback, the varying setbacks between the houses, the range of houses, the larger houses between the two, but I appreciate that comment. Is there visitor parking in on the aisle for single family homes? Single half family homes have a way for visitor access from houses. So yes, it's alley loaded. So you have garage loaded access on both sides or parking pads you can do next to the garages. So you can have a garage with a tandem space behind it or you can have a parking space next to the garage. So you can get up to two car garage and maybe four spaces behind it and then maybe a parking pad next to it. So you can have that parking behind the house. Very similar that we do on communities like West Haven, Berry Farms, Carlisle that I mentioned, it's very common. Um, the question about visitors access to the front of the houses, you would have a, like a side yard access along the property line where you can have a little gateway or walk to the front. We've done that very much on the projects I just mentioned at Berry Farms and West Haven and some other ones that have that similar condition. Let's see. Yes, 166 on plus or minus 61 acres, that's correct. It is a density of, check my notes, 2.68 DUA. It is not a safety issue, it's not a question. It's not a safety issue as much as it is saving the development money to build two bridges over Spencer Creek. It is not to be any benefit to the church as you have proposed. So the benefit is getting these roadways, that roadway out of the floodplain. And again, we do not want to disturb Spencer Creek. We want to maintain the beauty of, of Franklin. We do not want to get into the buffers. Um, that was a comment at one time to cross, but I think the consensus, and we're still working with the city, was to keep this clean as a natural resource and not build in the floodplain and the floodplain flood floodway and get this street out of the floodplain and floodway so it's more life safety issue. Um, I think I spoke to the first question about the awfully, awfully close together. So thank you. I think I hit all the questions. So is there any others that anyone has? Is there anybody from Franklin Planning on the call? I guess not. Uh, yes, Gary, this is Amanda Rose and I believe Joseph Bryan's here as well. Okay, I just wanna make sure if uh, if there's no more questions, I'll put the meeting to a close if, this, if that's all anybody has in terms of questions or comments. Well, thank you, I appreciate everybody's time. Thank you for your input as we move forward on this process. Have a good evening. Thank you, Amanda. Thank you, Joey.